Hey everyone, so today I wanted to talk about the Into the Light damage meta changes. Now that the update has been out for a couple days, I think it's a good time to answer some of your burning questions, as well as draw some significant conclusions about the most important changes that came out with update 7.3.6. So first of all, I'm going to talk about some exotic heavy reserve changes. So number one, we have 1k. 1k has actually received a 50% total damage increase. So in the past, 1k has had about 1.92 ish million total damage. And now if we go ahead and look at it right over here, it has almost 2.9 million total damage. Now, a lot of people laughed at 1k in the past for being a kind of dad option, you know, a lazy DPS option, not very good, but it's actually had a fairly competitive DPS stat for a long time now, ever since it's ignition change and so a 144k dps value is actually comparable to something like leviathan's breath and it actually has slightly higher total damage than leviathan's breath as well now the only difference between the two is that 1k obviously can't be stacked very well with multiple people given that the ignition damage is actually a fairly significant portion of the damage and leviathan's breath does require precision hits and a little bit more effort to get down perfect Okay, so now that we've talked about 1k, let's move on to Whisper of the Worm. Now, Whisper of the Worm, it's recently received craftable status, and with that change, it also received Field Prep. Now, Field Prep has given Whisper a 26% total damage buff. Now, in my opinion, this doesn't really move the needle on Whisper. Whisper already had very good total damage. It had something like 3.8 million total damage. Now it has 4.5. Now, 3.8 million total damage is already enough to best almost every exotic heavy weapon in the game right now, besides stuff like Dragon's Breath and other outliers. However, this thing now lasts 35, almost 35 seconds if you just shoot it straight at max fire rate without missing a single crit and still does 130k DPS. So what I wrote down in my notes here, this thing is comparable to Dragon's Breath in terms of total damage, except for it does lower DPS and it's stackable, whereas Dragon's Breath obviously loses damage the more and more people you add in the fire team using the same weapon. Now let's move on to Exterus. So special bridge GLs all got an impact damage buff. Exterius received a 21% damage per shot buff as a result. So if we go ahead and look down at Exterius, right, so we're going to go over to Exterius here. This value used to be a lot lower. It's now at 91k DPS when you swap with it, aka you swap to Exterius, shoot one shot, swap off. So that's fairly decent. However, I will say that Exterius is not a viable damage option still. It does significantly less damage per shot than something like Wilderflight. So if we take a look right over here, Exterius does about 47,000 damage per shot. If we head over to Wilderflight, Wilderflight does 81,000 damage per shot. So the difference is quite significant there. Even if we look at Exterius as a single damage option, what I did here is a little bit interesting, right? So Exterius, if you just shoot it straight with max stacks of corrupted nucleosynthesis, so like the Frenzy perk, uh, it does 75k DPS, which is actually similar to like a Aramite or something like a rocket sidearm with Surrounded. So it's around the, the area of other decent sustained special weapons for DPS. I've also added the final warning and the last word to the spreadsheet because the final warning currently has a bug where you can double stack Mechaneer's trick sleeves resulting in a 4 times damage multiplier which I damage tested and I'll show you guys in just a second. There's also the last word. The last word got a 6% I believe damage increase so I decided to add it to the spreadsheet to see how it stacks up against Malfeasance with Lucky Pants. I also retested Forerunner because that also got a damage modification and so let's actually take a look at the swap tab here and we'll see the results of my testing. So first up we have Forerunner. Forerunner does 350,000 DPS with the double trick sleeve swap bug. Now this is obviously insanely high but it's actually quite difficult to pull off and I'll show you guys what that looks like right now. So if we go ahead and watch this clip, I'm sitting underneath Templar. If you don't know how trick sleeves works, you have to get to critical damage, so red health. And once you get to critical damage, when you pull out a sidearm, you do two times damage with that sidearm until you heal back to white health, okay? So the bug that I'm doing here is I swap to my energy sidearm, Indebted Kindness. I dodge to make sure that I cancel out the stow animation. And so what appears to happen is that Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves erases the Trick Sleeves buff from your screen or from your character when you stow a sidearm. And so by bypassing the stow animation by swapping while I'm dodging, you'll see that my Foreigner is hitting for 51k a crit, which is insanely high, right? In only two mags of Forerunner, I'm able to hit, let's see here, I'm doing over a million damage, right? I've done basically 1.3 million. I got interrupted by a death there, 
but it's actually an insane amount of damage you're you're doing four times the amount of damage it's a four times multiplier now sidearms typically don't have very high dps but foreigner has fairly high dps for a sidearm and so multiplying its dps by four times using this exploit nets a total of 350,000 dps which is obviously insanely high that's the same dps as a grand overture missiles loaded times 20 volley so obviously this is very very insane uh, it might get patched eventually uh, because this obviously has some crazy applications for solo content but for now i decided to add it to the spreadsheet because it seems like it's a little bit obscure and maybe won't be patched in the near future as for the last word we can see here that it actually out damages malfeasance if the enemy is not taken or blighted by a wither horde which is good to know but the last word does require you to reload it mid damage using some sort of reload i used a marksman dodge in this case and i got a 125k dps value that being said of course malfeasance against taken enemies or blighted enemies still dominates the hand cannon competition up at 168k dps Okay, next up we have the other special bridge GL changes. So I recorded the lightweight non-spike damage, lightweight spike damage, mountaintop damage, double fire implosion damage, and double fire spike damage. So you can see all of the results here. And the biggest winners here are double fires and mountaintop. Lightweights actually proportionally got a much lower buff. And the reason for this is because of impact damage distribution. Double fires have a lot more impact damage built in because they, they shoot two separate shots compared to lightweights, which just shoot one. And so if we go ahead and look at how that's changed things, let me go to the weapons tab here, and you'll see that double fires with spike grenades do around 30 to 31K damage, whereas lightweights with spike grenades only do 22.8K. So if we go ahead and look at my conclusion area here, Mountaintop does 19% more damage than Wilderflight, and Wilderflight now does almost 35% more damage per shot than Vessel. So this is a big change compared to the previous patch which saw Wilderflight and Empty Vessel come closer together. Now those of you that were farming for a good Wilderflight with Auto Vorpal or Auto Frenzy are validated because it does in fact fairly significantly beat out Empty Vessel even if Empty Vessel is surge matched. On top of that, Mountaintop has a 21% damage increase per shot compared to the previous version, which is higher than I expected. I thought it would be about 15, instead it's about 21%, which is great. And so as you can see, I've added Brave Mountaintop to this area of the spreadsheet as well. Recombination Mountaintop, notably, is 250k swap DPS on that first two times damage shot, which is fairly significant, as you can see. I mean, that's almost the same amount of damage as a Parasite shot with no stacks, so that's fairly significant. And of course, I've added Mountaintop with Frenzy as well down here, which is kind of encroaching on this top territory over here. It does a little bit less DPS than something like, you know, Frenzy Wilderflight or Izanagi's Burden, but nonetheless, still pretty high regardless. So what do these changes all mean for DPS? Well, the DPS meta right now for insane optimization is still going to be rockets, at least until everybody gets a good edge transit roll. And for lazy DPS, it's still going to be heavy GLs. That being said, 1k is actually pretty good for LFG type lazy DPS if no one else is using it. If you're just lazy or you want to recommend a new player something to use if they have 1k and they've done last push, they've been lucky enough to get 1k, 1k is actually fairly good with reserve mods. I would recommend it for people over something like Thunderlord or other lazy options that are frequently cited. 1k is really, really easy to use. You just need to have Ember of Ashes on. Whisper has 4.5 million total damage now, which we already talked about. It does similar DPS to just straight shooting Galley with Reign of Fire, but it has four times the total damage. So obviously Whisper is a very good sustained DPS option as of right now. Wilderflight is now strictly better than Empty Vessel regardless of the surge distribution situation. And I'm going to say Mountaintop with Reign of Fire or Dragon Shadow is more usable for damage rotations than it's ever been. That being said, a lot of people are asking me if Mountaintop will replace Izzy. The big thing with Izzy is that it does fairly competitive swap DPS even if you rehone the weapon and it wastes a lot of time, right? It wastes 1.7 seconds of your time, whereas something like Mountaintop, if you just swap to it and swap off, is only 0.6 seconds. And so if you're doing swap DPS, you're going to need to find some sort of way to kill time while you're waiting for your something like your rocket or your GL to load. So Mountaintop is going to be good, but it's going to be situational. It's going to really depend on what scenario you end up using it in. On top of that, Forerunner with double trick sleeves is OP. A lot of people have been asking me, hey Aegis, I saw this clip on Billy Billy of this guy melting the Spire Harpy with Final Warning. 
uh, can you test out double, double trick sleeve sacking? And I was like, hey, you know, why don't I test Forerunner? Because Forerunner should have higher DPS than Final Warning. And lo and behold, yes, it does. It does. It has higher DPS by almost 50%. This is an absolutely obscene amount of damage. And uh, it might get patched, might not. But um, for now, I mean, it's pretty difficult to pull off. So, you know, it's not going to be used in, in a lot of speedruns. But I imagine it is very strong in solo content for now. Edge Transit, uh, a lot of people are asking me, hey, you know, is Edge Transit, is, is it fine if I only have, you know, these perks or these perks? Uh, I will say, I want to be explicit here, Edge Transit is only worth farming if you don't have an Envious Bait Cataphract. Cataphract has better stats, better max size, or if you're farming for the double perk option. So if you have a good Cataphract, or you don't need a good Cataphract, then there's no reason to farm Edge Transit unless you are going for the double perk. Only the double perk Edge Transit is worth keeping, the one with Cascade and Envious in the first column, and Bait and Switch in the second column. The rest doesn't matter that much, but ideally you get spike grenades and you also get augmented drum or mini frags as your other mag perk, and then handling and quick launcher obviously a given as well. Finally, I wanted to make one last announcement before we end this video, and that's that health bar recording real testing is underway. So right now, the ranking tab is based on a series of spliced clips and a theoretical total damage addition calculation. And I have this new tool from Corolla, this new version of DDT that actually records the health bar over time and exports it to a CSV file. So what that actually allows me to do is create these damage graphs where I have a damage rotation and you get to see damage over time, which is really, really cool, really, really useful. Uh, as you can see here, I've taken two examples. There's one with an Izzy GL Apex rotation, and then there's one with Thunderlord. Uh, this, this chunk is kind of when I did my, my Reign of Fire reload. So it's really cool. You can see the health bar update in real time, 20 times a second. So very, very excited to talk about this and share with you guys soon. So that's all for now. I'm going to be updating the tier list soon in their own kind of short video as an Into the Light update. And then I'll make the vault cleaning video. Sorry that that's been delayed, but obviously Into the Light just came out. So I have to update people on some of the stuff they've been asking me. And then we'll get right back into our regular schedule. So I'll see you guys maybe tomorrow or two days from now when I make that tier list update video.